Paula Franz here, Stream of Consciousness series. The title of this video is ADHD, My Greatest Gift. Uh, to understand what I'm doing here as a whole, I am uh, well over an hour and 15 minutes in now. Uh, please refer to the beginning video, which introduces what I am doing. So I got my timer set at five minutes, no editing involved. ADHD, My Greatest Gift. Okay, so Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is not a disorder. At age 35, I was diagnosed because my wife was like, I think you might have this thing. And she had me do a, up a little checklist of which I went, uh, there were 15 questions and I went check, 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 check. And apparently I'm the poster child for adult ADHD. So when I went and got diagnosed uh, by this guy who happened to be one of the world renowned experts, lucky me, he ended up, the first thing he said to me was like, Paul, you have to understand something here. You do not have a disorder. The world needs this to be labeled a disorder, and this is before I read a particular book, which I'm going to talk about in a later video, about hunters versus farmers. We're going to leave that for later. But he said, you are fast-minded. And he said, in order for the rest of the world to feel comfortable and call it a disorder, they're, even then they're calling it the wrong thing. It's not attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It'd be more appropriate, instead of ADD, to call it IDD, which is interest deficit disorder, which means that if you are not interested in something. The blood is literally not flowing in the front portion of your brain. So that explains so many levels of my life, particularly in my relationship with my wife, where she would be like, uh, honey, you know, can you pick your clothes up off the floor or take out the garbage? And quite literally, I felt like I was the most selfish asshole who ever walked the earth because my response was pretty much like, honey, I'm sorry, I'm just not interested. So I did try that joke with her once. It didn't go over very well. I was unconscious for quite some time. But the flip side to this whole thing is that if you are interested in something, you are hyper-focused, which typically means that if someone with this type of brain ends up doing what they love to do, they can excel and become better at it than anybody else. Uh, so this is an important element. When I look back on my life, when I look back on myself in school, I realized, you know, and what, I realized so many things about that time. And, and when I share this stuff, you know, I have parents coming up to me after, you know, uh, for, after speaking on stage and being like, you know, thank you so much for sharing. Because for the first time in my life, I feel like little Johnny or little Sally aren't screwed for life because they just don't fit into this culture. Again, a later video. And, and one of the things I would share would be, I know now that the very same, like, three things that, that, are the drive that get me up in the morning that that I love to do are the same things that, that that were with me when I was in school. You know, number one is music. You know, I don't I understand now, but when I under why I love music so much then, but music I was always fascinated by it. Not only you know did I enter the realm of becoming a musician, but why I now understand it because music can cut through all the bullshit. It gets, it gets right into the heart of the matter. You can understand a person who speaks a different language through a song. Like if music is just so powerful in that way, you know, and I can talk about that for hours. You know, that was number one. Number two, Lego. I mean, I lived and breathed Lego when I was a kid and it wasn't like new Lego. It's like old Lego. New Lego is like, we're going to tell you how to put this together. And, you know, and as long as you follow the instructions and I'm just like, what? No, old Lego was just a box full of blocks of different sizes and you built your own thing. And all I'm doing now with everything that I've created, people are like, well, Paul, you're really creative. I'm dog. I'm no more creative than I was when I was a kid just building with Lego blocks. I'm just building with bigger blocks now. Number two, number three, humans, you know, humans are fascinating. I now know I've learned and I'm continuing to learn how to communicate with humans. You know, I half the time think I'm the only sane person and I'm, I'm, I'm in the room studying everybody else. But when I was a kid, I learned at a young age, you know, that it, you shouldn't you shouldn't stare at, you know, the class bully trying to figure out what makes him tick while you're sitting there bored out of your mind in the classroom while the teacher is drinking whiskey under the desk. You know, as you're staring outside and going, well, I can't escape through those windows, so I could probably be better for me to be in here and try to figure out what makes this guy tick. Uh, because eventually, you know, staring gets gets seen and then you end up with some unfortunate instances in the schoolyard. Uh, but I digress. My point is, one of the great gifts of this, this ADHD brain, this hunter brain, which I'll talk about later, is that I'm well aware of the things I need help with. It's like, it's like a built-in humility factor. Without my wife, without my daughters, without the people around me in my business who do the things that I don't do well, I would be, I would be in a ditch on fire, I believe. But by sitting in the right seat on the bus, I know that 
all of the successes that have kind of come my way have come out of a brain that doesn't work in the normal, typical fashion. And I've been fortunate enough in my life to have the people around me recognize that if Paul's not sitting on that right seat on the bus, the world's going to explode. We, he needs to be on that right seat, and they help me to sit in, in that seat and to do what I do well. And, you know, and, and I hope that this is one of those things that I do well. But at the same time, I have no idea where my wallet or my car keys are, and, but I am wearing pants. Today's a good day. Next topic. We will move on from this, and in our next video, we will talk about an unexpected gift from COVID.